I will discuss the doubts related to fluid. Page eight. Question 10, A2. Okay. In the question 10A2, the ball is spinning in the direction as shown in the diagram. Suggest so where there's a greater, larger region of a turbulent flow on top of the ball. Suggest so why there's a larger region of a turbulent flow on the top of the ball than the bottom. So what is the reason when you check? Look, this is the surface of the ball. So the movement of the surface of the ball as it is, this is the direction in which the ball is spinning. So the movement of the surface of the ball and the motion of the fluid is opposite. So it, that is why here it will experience the maximum force. And as it will experience the maximum force, there will be greater turbulent flow. Because the turbulent flow <clears throat> depending on the movement of the object and direction in which the surface or the movement of an object. So because it is moving opposite to the direction of the fluid, a fluid is moving towards right, the surface A, the surface at point A is in opposite direction. That's why it will experience maximum force. So greater turbulent flow at the top as compared to that in a bottom, because you can see the surface, the movement direction of the surface and the direction of the fluid is same. So it will not resist the motion too much. That's why less turbulent flow or smaller force will be there from the bottom. So there is small upward force, greater downward force. As a result, this ball will come down on or land on the table. The diagram shows the air is deflected upward after passing uh, the ball. Explain why this means there must be a downward component of a force on the ball in addition to the weight. So what is the reason why there is a downward force? You have to use a Newton concept of a Newton law. Action and reaction forces are equal but opposite in direction. So when we compare these air particles fluid, so what happened if there is a force on the ball, which is downward. So there should be a force according to Newton third law action and reaction forces are equal and opposite in direction. So if there's a downward force on the ball, the Newton third or pair force will be upward force on the air molecule. That is why the fluid is moving upward or air is moving upward. Is it clear? So the air is applying a downward force on the ball. So this is a force by air on the ball. And this is a force by ball on air. That is why if air is forcing the ball to come down, the ball will apply a force in opposite direction. So that will force the fluid or the air to move upward. That is why when the ball is passing, when this ball is passing, you will see a fluid direction changes a bit. Is it clear? Is it clear to everyone? Page 10, question 13. In an experiment, a small metal ball is dropped into a cylinder of oil. The time taken for the ball to fall to the bottom of a cylinder is recorded. The experiment is repeated. Which change in the ball result in the greatest decrease in 
time to reach the bottom. So basically, if we increase the downward force on the ball, two things are there. We want to decrease the time. We want it to take a short time to come down. So if you want to re reduce the time, we want to increase the speed of this ball. So how the weight is a downward force which is acting and the up thrust is acting upward. The up thrust is acting upward and the viscous drag also it is acting upward. So we want to increase its acceleration or increase its change in speed or uh, velocity. So what we should do, we should increase the weight and how we can increase the weight by increasing a mass. So we will use a greater mass. So either, either C will be answer or D. Then we want to decrease this viscous drag, drag force on a spherical object that is equals to six pi eta R and V. So six pi eta R V, if I reduce the diameter, the viscous drag will also decrease. So I will decrease the upward force and I increase the downward force. So it will move at a higher speed or greater acceleration. That is why C is a right answer for this. Question 15 and 16 B2. In question 15, that investigation is carried out on a drag force. The force which opposes the motion that is called a drag force or viscous drag. On swimmers, the swimmer push off from the side of the pool with the same arms, uh, with his arm straight ahead of him and his velocity is measured as he glide, like without uh, stoking, he's moving, just gliding through the water. This is repeated with a swimmer arm at its side. So you can see two speeds are there. One is one when the arms are stretched straight ahead and another one is arms are at his sides. When arms are at his side, he has a greater change in velocity or greater decrease in velocity as compared to when arms are stretched straight ahead. So use the graph, describe and explain the motion of the swimmer performing glide one and glide two. So you have to use the graph and the values are there. When they say use the graph and values are written on the graph, so you can work out what quantity you can measure. Because it is a curve or for this part, it is a straight line. So you can work out the acceleration. So for both, how we explain this, for both swimmers, both cases, the velocity is decreasing. That is one thing. But decrease in velocity for glider one is greater than, is smaller than decrease in velocity for glider two. And what is the reason for that? The glider two is having a large area. So it will experience greater drag force the force which is opposing the motion. Or you can also compare their shapes that for glider one, it is more streamlined. So when the fluid will flow, it will flow around him. But for glider two, the fluid, because more surface area is exposed, not a streamlined shape. So he will experience greater turbulent flow as compared to glider one. Is it clear? Question 15. You have the viscous drag. If you see the formula, Viscous drag is equals to 6 pi eta r and v. So this r is actually referring to the size, greater the size. So viscous drag or drag force depends on the size as well.
and as well as the shape like example when you compare a shape of airplane <coughs> with the shape of the car so this is streamlined shape which reduce the turbulent means make a flow laminar but here if it is a turbulent flow then what will happen it will experience greater force yes the relation is there you can see the surface the surface which is exposed to the fluid directly in question 16 an oil drop is traveling at a terminal velocity the oil drop take 11.9 second to fall a distance show that the terminal terminal velocity means constant velocity so you have the formula speed is equals to distance divided by time so distance is there is in millimeter so 10.2 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by time interval which is 11.9 so you will show that the speed the terminal velocity is approximately 1 exponent minus 3 it is very difficult to measure the radius of such an oil drop directly suggest why because oil drops are not a rigid oil like you you don't have a metal sphere it's an oil drop so oil drops are not having a rigid shape structure their structure their shape changes if the sideways force is more so then it will become elliptical so why it is difficult you cannot measure the size the size the or the radius of the oil drop they are very small and the second thing is they they are not a rigid structure so they can deform you cannot place between the two surfaces <coughs> assuming that the upthrust is negligible show that the radius of oil drop is about 3 micrometer density is given and viscosity of the air <coughs> 1.82 exponent minus 5 is there the exponent minus 5 you already work out the velocity in the previous part as it is falling with the terminal velocity for a small object the upthrust can be neglected here so we can say weight is equals to viscous drag or no resultant force if negligible upthrust is there otherwise if it is falling weight is acting down up thrust acting up viscous drag is also acting up or drag force so if it is moving or falling with a constant speed or constant velocity there is no resultant force so weight plus drag force plus up thrust is equal or weight is equals to drag force plus up thrust but up thrust is negligible so you can consider that is zero so weight is equals to drag force how to find weight weight is mass into gravity and how to find mass it is density to volume into gravity and how to find volume because it we consider it's a spherical object radius is already given in the previous 4 by 3 pi r radius we have to find sorry not given so we will work out its volume and what about the viscous drag or drag force that is equals to 6 pi 
eta r and v so we have uh, viscosity is there density is there gravity is there so first we will work out like 6 pi eta r and v so first we will work out its volume so volume will be equal to 6 pi eta r v divided by density into gravity and after working out the volume after knowing the volume volume is equals to 4 by 3 pi r cube so you can find the radius page 14 question 6 part b that was the part b then page sixteen d a student tried to model a Millikan method to find the radius of an oil drop. The student dropped a ball bearing and recorded a time it took to pass between the two light gates and knowing the distance. Explain why this is not a good because what happened when he's using a ball bearing, when oil drop is there, oil drop, because it's small weight, so it can easily balance with the up thrust or the viscous drag. So it can move with a terminal velocity. But when we are using a ball bearing, first thing, it may not reach a terminal velocity because of its weight. It does not balance with the upward force. Because what he is doing, the student is dropping A student drop a ball bearing so he's just dropped the ball bearing and recorded a time it will take to fall but he did not drop this ball bearing in an oil or a fluid so how this one cannot matches with the oil drop method Millikan oil drop method because this oil drop is having a very small weight so it can easily balance with the upward force which is up thrust and viscous drag but weight of the ball bearing is more, so it can not easily matches with the upward force, which is viscous drag and up thrust. That is one thing. There will be, so it will have, this will have acceleration, but this will not have acceleration or acceleration will be zero because no resultant force is there. And when the ball bearing is moving, the condition when we apply a Stokes law, that the fluid flow around the object should be a laminar. But what happens when a ball bearing speed increases, the fluid flow around the object becomes turbulent. Like when you are driving a car at say 30 km per hour, you don't feel too much air. But as you are driving at 120 km per hour, because air molly, the speed of the object increase, so fluid particles continuously colliding, so viscous drag or drag force will also increase. And as the drag force increase, it means the flow of the fluid become turbulent. Is it clear? Then page 25. Question 28, A3 and C. A3. And see. Explain why the upthrust acting on a raindrop is often considered to be negligible. Now, what factors the upthrust depends on? Upthrust depends on the density of the fluid, 
it depends on the volume of object and it depends on gravity so these are the factors on which upthrust depends on so why we can consider the upthrust is negligible so as you can see the formula to calculate upthrust is equals to density of a fluid volume of object and gravity already rain drops are small in size but density of the fluid it is moving around the fluid is the air so what is the density of the air the density of air is negligible means a small value so this is volume is already small and density of the fluid is also small so two small values when they are multiplied the product will also become very small that is why the upthrust is can be neglected is it clear not density of displaced air density of the fluid the upthrust on the object the upthrust force depends on the density of the fluid through which the object is moving volume of the object the ob and the gravity means as a rain drop it is falling it is the fluid which is around this is air so density of the air is negligible means small value same thing volume of this rain drop is very small so when we multiply the product will come out very small so it can be neglected the shape of the rain drop depends on its velocity once at terminal velocity the rain drop is flat at the bottom due to the laminar flow around it and remain curve at the top due to turbulent flow add to a diagram to show the air flow around the falling rain drop so if rain drop is falling if its motion is downward the fluid flow will be upward so at the bottom it is a laminar flow but around it it should be a turbulent flow so how we draw this the bottom when the the if the fluid is moving that is laminar flow but when the fluid move around this rain drop the flow become turbulent so you can draw more lines i just only drew two direction is also important when you draw a direction of the fluid flow it is to oppose the direction of the motion of an object is it clear because i mention in the figure once at a terminal velocity the rain drop at the bottom is flat at the bottom due to laminar flow so this is the bottom so at bottom we should have a laminar flow the stream lines should not cancel out each other or cut each other or cross each other but it become turbulent and remain curved at the top due to turbulent flow so at the top you will make a turbulent flow page 28 question number 29b yeah this is question 29b describe how the results obtain and graphical method used to determine the value of the viscosity of glycerol so how we can work out the value of the viscosity of the glycerol 
for this first what we have to do we have to use the formula which is given to work out like what graph we will plot so that we can plot a graph and work out the gradient and using a gradient we can find the viscosity so as you see the first part in the beginning of the question they provide this equation so how i can use this equation to know what will be the result or what will be the gradient of the graph so if i simplify this equation 4 pi and r cube and g are constant and 3 is also constant so 4 pi r cube 3 and g is constant then it will be density of the ball minus density of the glycerol equal to 6 pi eta r v now we cancel out this pi will cancel with pi 2 multiplied by 3 and 2 multiplied by 2 and this this one r will cancel with r r cube so we are left with square so when we solve this equation 2 3 multiplied by 3 so it will be 2 by 3 2 2 by this 2 is there and 3 multiplied by 3 is 9 the difference in the densities multiplied by g r square is there because r cube is cancelled to so r square and that is equals to this side we are left with viscosity and v or this eta is multiplied other side it will divide so viscosity and v if i rearrange the equation only move the left hand side to right hand side so i can say v the velocity is equals to 2 difference in the density g r square by 9 eta now what we will do we will compare with a basically when you want to plot a graph you can plot a graph for the quantity which can be varied so the quantities which you can vary density cannot be changed gravity cannot be you cannot change gravity changes with altitude but you are not the one who can change the gravity same thing the viscosity at certain temperature the viscosity is also constant so the only things which we can change is the radius and when we change the radius the velocity will also or speed at the terminal speed will also change so these are the two things we can plot a graph so if i compare this with the equation of a straight line y is equals to mx so on y axis if i plot velocity on x axis if i plot r square so velocity on y axis and radius square on x axis what will be our gradient so our gradient will be equal to 2 by 9 difference in the density of the ball bearing and the glycerol g divided by eta so using this so what we will do first you will write work out this equation then you will mention y is equals to mx when we compare with the equation of straight line so we will get a straight we'll get a straight line which is passing through the origin and we we will find the gradient of this straight line by using a formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and the gradient of this straight line represent so the gradient of this straight line is representing the whole factor and if we need the density so using this whole factor we can find the density of the glycerol is it clear discussion how to work out the density of the glycerol sorry viscosity of the glycerol 
So same thing, we'll have the constant and using those constant because after getting a gradient, so we have gradient, the densities are given, gravity is constant. So we can work out the viscosity. Is it clear this part? Then page 29, question number 31A2. 31A2. It is observed that the large bubble reach the top of the column of a liquid in less time than the smaller bubble. By considering the forces acting on the bubble as it rises, explain this observation. Why the large bubbles are able to rise more quickly as compared to small bubbles. So basically why they are rising because there's an upward force that is up thrust and downward force is a weight. So up thrust depends on the density of the fluid that is same for both bubbles. For large bubble or a small bubble, the density of fluid around them is same. Second thing is volume of object and gravity. So when you check the size is changing, so up thrust is equals to volume of object and gravity and it is a spherical object, so 4 by 3 pi r cube. Density gravity so so what it shows when we change the size up thrust is proportional to r cube like if i double the size it will increase by factor 8 the up thrust but when we increase the size the weight will also increase or the drag force will also increase but what when we compare the drag force or viscous drag So how the drag force or a viscous drag is related, drag force that is 6 pi eta rv. So the force which is opposing like the up thrust is acting up and the viscous drag is acting down, it's trying to oppose. So it shows that the viscous drag or drag force is directly proportional to radius. Or it can be radius square when you work out the formula completely changing but it is proportional to radius so it means when the radius is double the viscous drag will be doubled so what what it shows like if i use the numbers the values example this was say two meter cube example this is and this one is four meter cube if the two meter cube was experiencing the up thrust of 10 newton and the drag force or a viscous drag was 5 Newton. But what happened when we double the size, if I double the size, the up thrust will increase by factor 8. So first it was 10 Newton, now it will be 80 Newton. But the drag force or a viscous drag only increased by same factor. So if you increase the size, the drag force will be double. So it was 5 become 10. So what is the resultant force here? 70 Newton. What is the resultant force here? That is 5 Newton. So changing the size, increase the up thrust, so increase the resultant upward force. That is why large bubbles will reach the top of the column quickly as compared to small bubbles. Is it clear this part? Yes, comparing or, but mass is not too effective. Like example, the weight is affecting it, but when you're comparing, these are air bubbles. So air bubbles, we can neglect their weights. Page 31, question 31B2 and C2, 31B2, the photographs, 31B2. The photographs are at a scale 1 to 12. Yeah, that is right. The drag, because the size increased, so drag force is also increasing. 
there is an increase in drag force because of increase in size there is an increase in upthrust because in increase in size but upthrust vary with the cube so if we double the size the upthrust will be eight times but if we double the size the drag force will be only double twice or you can mention it vary with the square that formula in which it shows vary with the square you do you are not learning that but it also vary with the square but the thing is that the increase in the upthrust is more than increase in the drag force or viscous drag that's why the resultant upward force increase so it will accelerate or greater acceleration the photographs are to scale 1 to 12 measure use a measurement from photographs calculate the speed of the bubble between photograph 2 and 3 the following photograph were taken at point so the time interval is 0.33 second so what you have like you will compare the distance travel by the bubble you can take their centers draw horizontal line on the center using a ruler and measure this distance and this is 1 to 12 what is the meaning of 1 to 12 like example if it is one, like measurement example if it is 1 cm so actually it is 12 cm the same scale but in it is 12 means the 12 times actually the scale the figure size is 1 by 12 of original size and the time interval the measurements the time interval is already given in the question they mention each the photograph time interval between the photograph is 0.33 so that distance divided by time you will get the speed describe an additional measurement that you would need to take from the photograph how, how it could be calculated determ to determine the drag force assume that the bubbles reach the terminal velocity so to calculate a terminal velocity what you have to do you have to measure the size because to calculate as we know it as it is rising up the upward force up thrust weight is acting down and viscous drag is acting down so drag force and weight and up thrust or i can say drag force is equals to up thrust minus the weight so how to calculate the up thrust up thrust is equals to density volume and gravity so i need for volume what i need for cal volume i need the size volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube so i have to measure its diameter or the radius and using a diameter i can work out its volume and using a volume i can find the viscous i can find the upthrust force and weight how to find the weight weight is equals to mass multiplied by gravity and using that we can find the viscous drag this is one method another is viscous drag according to stokes 6 pi eta rv so we need a viscosity we need the size and we need a terminal velocity using that we can also find the drag force is it clear so first we work out a resultant force a resultant force is actually equal to the drag force is it clear this part the resultant force is a difference so this was assignment fluid 